All right, so um, real world compound inequality. So I um, struggled to come up with a couple of what I thought would be interesting um, word problems that involve setting up compound inequalities. You know, those are inequalities that are joined by and or or. And uh, yeah, so let's let's think about them. Let's solve them together. We'll draw some diagrams, I think, because they're a little bit complicated, but kind of cool. And I've got pictures for you, so that's good. So let's start with this one. This one's a little bit easier. Um, okay, so typically I harvest about seven sweet potatoes for every slip I plant. You know, it's like these little, uh, um, you know, like little sweet potato shoots. That's not a very good representation. Anyway, you plug, you know, you plant them in the ground. Instead of starting with a seed, you just put it. You have this little plant that's kind of started already. Um, you plant that, and then uh, then sweet potatoes grow from there. Okay, so that's that's what a slip is. Okay, typically I, I harvest about seven sweet potatoes for every slip I plant. So I plant these little guys, and you know, let's say I get seven sweet potatoes for each one that I plant. You know, it's not going to work exactly to be that, but we're simplifying things. Um, sweet potato slips cost a buck fifty each, and I don't want to spend more than twenty dollars on them this year, but I need at least seventy-five potatoes this fall for a massive sweet potato fry party I'm hosting. I love sweet potato fries. Um, how many sweet potato slips should I buy and plant? There's a lot of information, so let's just let's uh let's just write down what we know. Okay, so. Um, so the question is, how many sweet potato slips should I buy and plant? So let's call that um, let's call that S, but I'm worried it's going to look like a five. I'm bad at drawing S's. So let's call it P, like for potato. Okay. Um, okay. So P is is for sweet potato slips. Um, Okay, so typically I harvest about seven sweet potatoes for each slip I plant. So if I if I multiply that by seven, um, that'll be the number of sweet potatoes that I can expect to get. Okay, um, so okay, so we know that so far. So sweet potato slips cost one fifty each. So if I look at, uh, so let's write that separately. Um, uh, so they cost a dollar fifty each. So for every sweet potato slip that I buy, it's going to cost me a buck fifty. So a dollar fifty times however many I buy. Okay, this is what. Okay, I don't want to spend more than twenty dollars on them this year. So um, this is the, this is where we're dealing with money, and this is where we're dealing with the number of potatoes. Okay, so I'm just drawing pictures. Um, I don't want to spend more than twenty dollars on them this year. Uh, so I don't want to spend more than twenty dollars. So let's translate that into um, however much these are going to cost. It's going to be less than or equal to twenty dollars. Okay, I can spend up to twenty twenty dollars, but I don't want to spend more than that. So I would really like the price of this to be less than or equal to twenty. So at most twenty dollars. Uh, but I need at least seventy five potatoes this fall for a massive sweet potato fry and party. So uh, so that that I'm hosting. So I'm I'm getting seven sweet potato plants for every slip that I plant. Uh, that needs to be at least 75 potatoes. So however many this is needs to be um, greater than or equal to 75. You know, at the very minimum it can be 75, but I'd really like it to be more than 75. Okay. Um, so here's we've trans translated this information into. Um, uh, two inequalities, and the question is, and versus or. Uh, you know, so is it is it true that you know, if I get more more than seventy five, you know, greater than or equal to seventy five potatoes, I'm fine. Or you know, or it could cost less than um, twenty dollars. No, I need both these things to be true. So I, I need at least seventy five potatoes and I I need them to cost um, at most twenty dollars. Okay, so this is a compound inequality. I need both of these things to be true. So let's figure out how many. Um, let's figure out what p is. 
um, or what p can be. All right. So uh, I can I so I say I can solve these separately. So I've got let me just do this one up here. Seven p is greater than or equal to seventy five. Um, divide by seven, divide by seven to get p by itself. So yeah, p is greater than uh, or equal to whatever 75 divided by 7 is. It's going to be some kind of decimal. I'm just going to divide. 10.7 um, 10.7 Okay, so in order to get at least 75 potatoes, I need to plant you know, greater than or equal to 10.7 slips, so I, you know, at least 11, let's say. Um, but let's, let's look at what what this is going to cost. Uh, 1.50p is less than or equal to 20. Uh, it's a buck 50 times however many slips I buy. It needs to be less than or equal to $20. So uh, I'll, I'll solve that for P. I just divide by 150. Um, so P is less than or equal to whatever 20 divided by 150 is. 20 divided by 150. 13.33. Um, uh, slips. So, p the number of slips, potato slips I buy is needs to be greater than or equal to 10.7, and p needs to be um, less than or equal to 13.3. Um, so I could write that as uh, you know interval notation 10.3. 7 to 13.3 I could um, it's a third sorry it's hard to see I could I could graph that um, uh, so we got 10.7 here 10.7 and 13.3 here it needs to be uh, less than or equal to 13.3 and greater than or equal to 10.7 so um, so So this would be my solution set. So basically, all all said and done, I need to plant somewhere be between 10.7 and 13.3 um, potato slips. So let's say 11 or 12. Yeah, probably 12. We'll say. All right. Um, let me get us started on another one. Let me see. Uh, I, let's let's try to do it quickly. I'm, I feel like I'm taking a lot of time. Uh, so my friend and I had a misunderstanding, and I'm not sure if he took the train going north or south. He was supposed to get on the train more than two hours ago at a stop 50 miles north of me. For the sake of simplicity, assume the train goes at a constant rate of 60 miles per hour and doesn't make any stops. You know, we're kind of simplifying the situation. How far away could my friend be from where I am now? So let's, let's graph this. Um, let's call this where I am now. Okay, so... Um, he is, he's supposed to get on a train 50 miles north of me, so here's his stop, um, you know, this is 50 miles north, okay, and I'm not sure if he went, um, this way, or if he went, uh, this way. Okay. So, um, so let's look at the the two. So he he either went this way or he went that way. There's the clue. This is a or inequality. Okay. So he he went. He's going 60. Regardless, he's going 60 miles per hour. Um, in whatever direction he went, he's going 60 miles per hour. Um, and he got on the. He's supposed to get on the train more than two two hours ago. So. Um, so to translate that, if he's going 60 miles an hour for more than two hours, 60 miles an hour for more than two hours, um, that's going to be greater than uh, 120 miles. If you go 60 miles per hour for two hours, that's 120 miles. Uh, he, he's been doing that for more than um, um, two hours, so it'll be more than 120 miles. Okay, so how far away is he from me? I'm, I'm. This is a little, little me down here. Um, 
So let's say he goes north. <clears throat> he could be either um, 60. Um, OK, so he could either be, um, let's call it d, the distance. The distance could be greater than 120 miles uh, this way. We're going to call this the positive direction. Um, plus this 50 miles. Um, okay, so he's he's st this. If he goes this way, we're start we're assuming he started off. You know, he's already 50 miles away from me, and then he's going at least 120 miles. You know, further away from me. So his distance could be greater than 170 miles away from me. Or um, so he starts here at say goes this way. So if he goes this way, um, he could be. Um, so he's, go he's he's gone for at least twenty uh, two two hours. So he's he's gone at least one hundred twenty miles this way. So he could be uh, greater than uh, one hundred twenty miles, but if he went this way, um, so he's getting closer closer to me. Uh, and then he's going farther away, so I would subtract that f that 50 miles. Um, that makes sense. So, uh, in other words, um, instead of adding, you know, he's already he's starting out 50 miles away, farther away, going this way. So I'm adding 50 miles to whatever he's gone. Um, this way, I'm subtracting that 50 miles because, um, you know, he has to first cover that 50 miles, and then he's going far away from me. So d so 120 minus um, 50 would be so he's so his distance away from me is either 170 is either greater than 170 miles or his distance is greater than 70 miles um, either one either way he's at least uh, he's at least 70 miles away from me basically I don't know that could have been a bad example. Um, Point being, here, what you do is use the information in the word problem to translate it into inequalities. Just write what you know, write each piece, draw diagrams until there's a situation that makes sense, and then pay attention to, are you looking at an or or an and? Do both the conditions have to be true, or could either one be true? Um, yes. So, all right, there you go.